Subtle Tough Glove family, check it out. I got a question for you. With Shakur Stevenson's recent performance or lack thereof, right? Did he unintentionally leave the door open for Frank Martin to swing the momentum back into his favor? I think he might have. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Tough Glove Boxing. I am locked in and let's get ready to talk about it. What's good with you, Tough Glove family? Salute, salute. First of all, as always, I want to take the time to thank you for checking out the content. You saw the thumbnail. You heard the introduction. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, I recently did a video not too long ago when I was uh, breaking down Edward De La Santos and Shakur Stevenson's fight before it happened, asking where was, Sh well, uh, where was Frank Martin? Has anybody seen him? Okay. And recently he's come out and he did a really good interview. Um... He did it on the Queens of Boxing. Y'all go check them out. You know, these two sisters. It's always refreshing to see the sisters know what they're talking about when they're dealing with boxing. But he gave them a really good interview. Answered a lot of good questions. Um, it's also a good uh, channel. So you will see it up in my shout out box. Okay, go sub them up if you're not already subbed up. You got a chocolate sister. You got a vanilla sister. Whatever flavor you crave. You dig? And they know boxing. But shout out to them. But the reason why I'm making this video, right, is because right now a lot of people are coming down hard on Shakur Stevenson, even though I said and still feel like Edwin De Los Santos is just as much to blame as Shakur Stevenson. Though Steven, uh, Shakur Stevenson did make the fight hard and, un, um, you know, it, it was a lack of activity. It was uninteresting. It was kind of boring, kind of a snooze fest. Edwin De Los, uh, De Los Santos's lack of being able to capitalize on things that Shakur was not doing, like using his left hand. He wasn't able to cut off the ring. So I feel like they both should get a bit of the blame, okay? But neither, neither here nor there, everybody seems to be pointing a finger at Shakur Stevenson and with him being a bigger name and, have, and being held as the future pound for pound number one, he should be getting a lot of that blame, okay? Even he himself doesn't really want to take credit for that win, but nevertheless, he is the WBC super champion right now at lightweight. But with that said, I no longer have to ask, have you seen Frank Martin? Because he's come out, like I said, on that interview, and he's made an appearance, and he cleared up a few things. Now, the one thing I wanted to say is while the momentum with Shakur Stevenson is down right now, I think that this is really... He kind of handed Frank Martin the keys, if you will, because I personally feel, and you guys get in my comment section and let me know if this is something that you agree with, right? If Frank Martin was to take on a fight with Edwin De Los Santos and perform very well, and we all know, listen, Frank the Ghost Martin is the truth in that ring, okay? He has good feet. He has good power. You know, he, he's a great fighter. All around. He, he's also another fighter that's a complete package, right? He's just shorter in stature, but he's very, very fast. And I would argue he's even faster than Edwin De Los Santos. I think that would be a very good fight, especially the way his style of fighting is in whoever trains him, which is Devic James. Devic James doesn't really favor fighting off the back foot that much. So I think that we would get that explosive fight that we expected to get with Shakur Stevenson. Now, from what I understand, Edwin De Los Santos is with PBC, so with Trent Martin, so I don't know how they would feel matching them up against each other, being that these could be two uh, potential big stars for them. I think it would be a great idea. I think that uh, Frank Martin also has an opportunity to get in the ring with Jermaine Ortiz, right? Because Jermaine Ortiz has been calling out Shakur Stevenson. But I feel like if Frank Martin was to get in the ring with Edwin De Los Santos, right? And perform really well and or much less come out on top, whether it be by knockout or through a points decision, that would kind of give him the fanfare that Shakur Stevenson lost. Now, granted, granted, there's nothing that Frank Martin did in the ring that affected his fanfare, to be honest with you. His fit, you know, uh, he got a lot of his criticism for pulling out of, uh, of the Shakur fight. And when you really think about it, 
it kind of worked out in his favor, even though it frustrated us as boxing fans. It kind of worked out in his favor, given the fact that Shakur allegedly, which I said allegedly, a big alleged, was injured, like everybody's coming out the report now. So that fight might have even possibly looked like a snooze fest as well. Him against Frank Martin, and that would have done Frank Martin no favors, just like it's not really doing Edwin De Los Santos favors, right? Even though, you know, you still have Edwin De Los Santos fans that held him as the next great conqueror, conqueror, you know, conqueror. But, you know, it is what it is, right? I'm not mad at anybody picking their man. Now, as far as Frank Martin is concerned, he got a lot of slack for his last performance against Autumn uh, Hoover-Tunian. And I really thought that that was unwarranted. I actually came up with a video after that stating that that was a really good fight. My only issue with Frank Martin is that he didn't make the adjustment fast enough. But Autumn was a very good and a well-accomplished fighter. It's just that a lot of people didn't know who he was. And they so used to seeing Frank Martin go in there and look dominant. And so when that wasn't the case, you know, all of a sudden he had a bad fight, which it wasn't a bad fight. It was a tough fight. The fight was actually very entertaining. I was glad to see Frank Martin go through some ad ad adversity, uh, get a little pushback to see how he dealt with it. And he handled it like a warrior. OK, so I didn't agree with all of the pushback that he got after that. Now, what I did agree, disagree with was him pulling out of the Shakur Stevenson fight. Now, I don't know. The, the specifics about what the contract was because you really, you know, as fans, we just don't really know. We got to go by hearsay. But from what I understand, he wanted 50-50. That's what Shakur Stevenson is saying. And then on the other end, you got people saying that they were trying to pay him about $100,000, which I can agree putting your life on the line for $100,000 and after taxes, that's, you know, when you, you know, it's easy for us to sit here and say he should have took that. But, you know, if he felt like that was too little money and you got somebody like Shakur Stevenson, who's a big name and is going, you know, is going to get a lot of exposure off the fight. You know, they could have made him a, a better deal than $100,000, right? They could have made him a better deal. I think Shakur Stevenson was like saying it would have been like five or six times more than what he got, you know, in any fight or anything like that. Again, I don't know. That's the financial part of it. As boxing fans, that's really none of our business. But it, it did affect how we saw Frank a little bit because he pulled out of the fight just, you know, out of nowhere. Okay? We was all ready for the fight, and, and he pulled out. And Edwin De Los Santos stepped up. Now, what I feel like would happen if Frank Martin was to fight Edwin De Los Santos, that would be a tough fight to call, but I would have to give to Frank Martin. Frank Martin has power. A lot of power, right? And he also has a great delivery system for that power. He has fast feet. He's a southpaw. He fights off of angles. He's not afraid to get into the combat zone. He fights inside the pocket very, very well, slipping punches, countering. So I think that will be an amazing fight, right? And if he was to make that statement, I think he would have much more leverage going into the Shakur Stevenson fight to get a bigger bag if that in fact was what held up that fight in the first place, right? Also, I've been on record saying I think Shakur Stevenson should give Edwin De Los Santos a rematch. Fans seem to be split on it. Some of them are saying that, you know, um, Shakur Stevenson beat him with one hand, so what would it look like if he was a 100%? I would argue it would look very different, right? But not necessarily in Shakur's favor. You got to understand Edwin De Los Santos is somebody that um, takes advantage. He's a counter puncher. He uh, has good timing, so he throws punches in the you know while the, the the punch is going on. He throws punches in between punches. So just as much as he is a defensive fighter himself, he also takes advantage of an offensive opponent and being able to punch between their punches and town them and counter them. So I think that if Shakur Stevenson was to be more offensive, he would actually be putting himself at more risk to get knocked out by Edwin De Los Santos, given Edwin De Los Santos style. However, with Frank Martin, that's a little different. Frank Martin is really, really good, as you can see on my screen, fighting within the pocket. So right in a combat zone, he's comfortable. He has a good beard. He's very, very fast. He has a lot of uh, power. He has good feet. He fights off the angles. He slips punches, so his defense is up to par. And I think that will make an exciting fight. Now, if he was able to make that a fan-friendly fight, and come out on top, I would argue that that would put him in a better position than Stephen Shakur is in right now. 
right? And like I said, I'm a fan of all of these fighters. I would even throw Jermaine Ortiz in the mix. If he can get a fight with Jermaine Ortiz and come out on top of that fight, because Jermaine Ortiz, if you ask me, he really shouldn't have that loss on his record. At the very least, it should have been a draw when he fought Lomachenko, but... It is what it is, the politics of boxing, right? Uh, you don't see a lot of Lomachenko fans bringing that fight up. And when they do, they talk about what a long layoff Lomachenko had. But that don't change the fact that I think that they may have robbed Jermaine Ortiz in that fight. But anyway, you know, I wanted to, to get on this uh, video and let you guys know that I feel like Frank Martin right now has the perfect opportunity to make his way back. Now, I checked Box Rec. It doesn't look like he has any fights on the horizon. Um, we all know PBC is looking for a new home for their talent. But in the meantime, I don't see nothing wrong with them sending some smoke towards the top rank in ESPN way. You know, because possibly... You know, Edwin De La Santos and Frank Martin will be a way more exciting fight than the, Shakib, uh, the Sh Shakur Stevenson fight. Matter of fact, I'm quite sure of it if everybody goes into the ring 100% because Frank Martin is not really somebody that's going to run from the smoke. Devin James has not been on record as being the accepting of that style of fighting anyway. You understand? He wants you to step to your opponent, back your opponent down. And so I think that would be a fantastic fight. Do you think Frank Martin has what it takes to beat an Edwin De Los Santos? And if he does beat Edwin De Los Santos, does the momentum swing from Shakur Stevenson to him? Right? Because I think that will put him right in position to be a pay-per-view star. For him to get into a ring and do to an opponent that... He shares in common with Shakur Stevenson and that opponent, I mean, and Shakur Stevenson wasn't able to make that opponent look bad and he goes in there and he does the do against this opponent. I think the fans would love it. I think the fans will put him right up there. He already has an inherited fan base from Every Spence Jr. Being that he's fighting under man down promotion, I think he should take full advantage of that. Y'all get in the comment section and let me know what y'all think. Do you think that's a fight that Edwin De Los Santos would be up to take, right? Because if he's really running towards that smoke and he really wants to fight the best in his division, Frank Martin is included in that. Now, I had my jokes about Frank Martin pulling out and saying he was running scared for his life and everything like that. But, you know, I'm a boxing fan, so I'm going to critique people when I need to critique them and I'm going to give them uh, their... I'm going to celebrate them when they, need, when they need to be celebrated. It doesn't matter who it is, right? Because I'm unbiased. And also, as far as... um. He's concerned he represents my demographic of men. So, you know, I stand by Frank Martin as well. You know, you got the short dark skin brothers. He's out there repping for us. You know what I'm saying? Us dark skin brothers need all the representation we can get. You know, I was one of the ones that chaired when Nino Brown shot G Money. No, no hate. No hate. You know what I'm saying? No hate to the light skin brothers. You know what I'm saying? But y'all, you know, somebody got to represent the short chocolate brothers out there. Shout out to Tate Diggs. You dig what I'm saying? But anyway, all jokes aside. All jokes aside, I think that this is a perfect opportunity for Frank Martin to get right back into the mix. He's talented enough. Uh, his name has been pushed out there enough. This is the perfect opportunity for him to wipe that dirt off of his name, that little bit that he accumulated from pulling out of the Shakur Stevenson fight. And let's talk about a little bit of stats, right, to see how he matches up against some of these guys. Right? So with Jermaine Ortiz, Jermaine Ortiz is 5'8 with a 69-inch arm reach, Right? And he's also a great fighter. He comes to fight inside the pocket. He's not going to be running around. So that'll also be a fan-friendly fight. Edward De La Santos is more fleet-footed. So I feel like Frank Martin would have to be more of the aggressor. You, you, you know what I mean in that situation? Because we all know Edwin De Los Santos, even though with the Shakur Stevenson fight, it didn't look like that. But in Edwin De Los Santos, this other fight, he's usually the fleet-footed, good timing countering type of fighter you understand what i'm saying but anyway he has the longer arm reach right and he does have fast hands so that jab may come into play but you got to remember you know uh frank martin has great timing as well and he's a master at fighting inside the pocket so you throw that jab out there just a little too long and you're going to get counted and you might get sat down on your behind you all saw that performance he had against michelle rivera and i thought that was going to be an all-out war he made it look easy autumn that was a really entertaining fight. It was a fan-friendly fight. Artem came to fight, and Artem is tough, and he was celebrated. You understand? He was like a bronze Olympic bronze medalist, but a lot of people just didn't know who he is, so they didn't understand why he was giving Frank Martin so much trouble, right? But Frank Martin still pulled it off. He just made the adjustment a little too late. One would argue that if he would have stepped it up in the earlier rounds, he would have got Artem out of there a lot earlier.
right? He would got him out of there. I wouldn't even went to the judges' cards. But, you know, that fight has happened already. It is what it is. But, yeah, Edward De La Santos, they're all 5'8", right? So there's no great, there's no real great physical difference there, right? I said that Shakur, uh, Frank Martin is short, but, you know, really, if he's 5'8", damn, I'm short, bro. Now I think about it, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, you know, uh, Frank Martin, but it's also Edwin De La Santos is listed as 5'8". Right? He just has the longer arm reach by about two inches. You know? So, um, you know, but I still think that would make a great fight. I still think that, um, you know, that would put Frank Martin in a position to really dominate. Here it is. Uh, YouTube channel is Neek J. But, you know, you will have to go to the Queens of Boxing. Like I said, I'll put it up in my shout out box. So y'all can go check out that interview. It was done about a day ago. Um, Frank Martin stops by and, yeah, you know, he clears up a lot of things in that interview. It was a really good interview. Shout out to those sisters for getting it and putting them back on the scene because I was just saying in my video, man, Frank Martin got to make some appearances. He got to get his name back out here so it don't die on the streets. You know what I mean? And right now with Shakur Stevenson's recent performance, he got the perfect opportunity to kick the door wide open. Frank Martin is back, baby. He got the perfect opportunity to do it. So let's see how he starts moving, right? Let's see if the PBC is going to hold on to him until they finish their deal with whatever they're trying to get, you know, the new platform that they're going to use. Maybe they'll make the fight happen on their platform, which would be great, you know, because really, when you think about it, why would you put Frank Martin and Edwin De Los Santos on any other platform other than one that's so solely supporting the PBC? I just hope that, you know, the PBC resolves that, that issue of uh, who's going to distribute their fights to the public, I hope they, they get that done real soon, whether it's on Amazon Prime or whoever else that they're considering going to. I'm just ready for um, them to get back into the mix. But that's definitely a fight I would buy into. I would love to see Frank Martin versus any, any of these three fighters here. right? I would love to see Frank Martin versus Edwin De La Santos, Edwin De Los Santos versus Jermaine Ortiz. I would even like to see Jermaine Ortiz versus Shakur Stevenson. But like I always said in my other video, I want to see Shakur Stevenson before he fight anybody. I would love to see him give Edwin De Los Santos a rematch. That may not happen. The next best thing to me is Frank Martin and Edwin De Los Santos. And that will set up a good Frank Martin and Shakur Stevenson fight for next year. Y'all get in the comment section. Y'all let me know what y'all think about what I said. The question was, did Shakur Stevenson leave the door wide open for Frank Martin to come back and possibly even become a star? Thank you for checking out the content. Y'all hit that like button. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Become part of the Tough Glove family. We're a small family, but we're a strong family. And you don't have to agree with everything I say. All you got to do is do what I do and love the sport of boxing. Go check out that Frank uh, Martin interview on the Queens of Boxing. We out. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here.